Yes, yes, we actually showed the Remember Me project at the October Gallery in London mm. and raised funds with the Bella Teaching Foundation. So currently we are running a, a, um, computer classes. We refurbished the computer mm. lab in the female prison and we're running classes there. We had based, we've had some donors who've really helped us. The Australian High Commission helped us with um, the millinery course that we did in mm. the collaboration with Hatbox. Oh, and Abana. Um, yes, Abana was great. And um, Velma's Millinery, mm. Velma who did that. And um, we've also had from um, GIZ who currently mm. we're running a program now where we've built a sanitizer factory in the female prison and mm. um, making sanitizers for all the um, inmates in this country and the prisons and making masks for all the inmates in this country. We're sending some off to some of the prisons across West Africa. That's remarkable. Thank you. That's that's really remarkable, truly remarkable. And you, the fact that you make time for it is most impressive because, I mean, driving all the way to Insalm is not, it's not easy. Number one, the traffic you have to stay in, the yes. road. Well, the road is a lot better now. But yeah, that's truly, truly impressive. And you mentioned in one of our conversations about one of the inmates whose daughter is now in the United States. Yes. Yes. Can yes. You, you want to shed yes. some light so, on that? Yes. Um, so one of my, uh, one of the inmates who I met because, you know, they, he had called or something and he said he had a child mm. and I said, he said he had a child in tech and I, to be honest, I didn't believe him. So I said, let your daughter call me. Mm. So she called me and she was in first year. She, I think she just finished first semester and he had a sentence of about 60 years. Mm. So she was reading chemistry and I thought, oh my goodness, like she's really smart and she's mm. worth, you know, helping. So we paid for her fees throughout tech and she graduated first class chemistry. Oh. And I was so proud of her and I wanted her to just know that the world is her stage and she can do so much mm -hmm. so we applied to several schools and um, she got accepted to quite a lot and um, her school that she's currently in gave the most scholarships so we just had a balance right. in excess of a little bit of ten thousand dollars that we had to pay for her and she's currently enrolled and wow. we're, I'm excited about graduation next year ah. and she's hoping to continue to do her PhD and how does her father feel now he cannot believe it. I remember when she was leaving, she didn't want him to know that she was leaving till Why? she had landed oh, right. in America. I think right. it was it was just a lot for her. I mean, she first of all couldn't believe it, yeah. and then it was actually happening. So I had the 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 honor of being able to tell him that his daughter was in school in America, oh. and there was. I don't think I can describe the feeling, and this I, is why yeah. I do what I do. Wow. Very interesting. And you get support. I mean, you mentioned some institutions, but with your friends, your family, are you able to get enough support from, from them? Well, it's, it's, a lot of, it's a lot of work. Mm -hmm. First of all, we get support from Ampim Chambers as a law firm. Mm -hmm. So a percentage of all the fees that's charged through the firm goes towards the FJI. Mm -hmm. Everyone who eats at any of my restaurants portion goes towards FJI oh, nice. and so yeah because raising money for a prison work is one of the most difficult things and so and then friends and family have supported me um, throughout I remember when I started and I used to do care packages you know mm. I would get rice from somebody biscuits from somebody and do little packages and send to everybody so it's been it's been it hasn't been easy but yeah. it's, it's going well and what have these trips to the prison taught you I mean I'm sure you've learned a lot from I'm a lot of these inmates. Absolutely. I tell people that I think they do more for me than I do for them, ironically, because they've taught me that life is very, it, it can't be that serious. You mm -hmm. know, you know, when you get very angry about something and you can't let it go and, you know, your anger um, stares in you and then you act out and then you can end up in the prison. So it's taught me how to let things go, how to see things it's just shown me that grace and mercy is um is very important yeah. Like, yeah you're a very religious woman i am i think i you can fairly say i am <laughs> <laughs> i don't i'm very proud of my faith and i i'm I, i'm a product of like god's mercy his favor everything i don't joke with my my religion you're or a my christian i am okay. i am a practicing Christian. I am. I am. <laughs> and you, you fast. A lot. I am. I yeah. am. We're in Lent. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you're a Catholic. No, I'm not Catholic, yeah, yeah. But, but you, you know, just, I'm just, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. That's mm -hmm. nice. And how you keep mentioning the grace of the, of the Lord, the mercies. How important is that in your ability to combine everything that you do? 
Well, I believe that, first of all, I believe that my work in the prison is my God-given purpose. Okay. You know, I don't think that... I think this is exactly why God asked me you to go to... You won't hand it over to anybody. Today. I could. I mean, it's, it's, it's bigger than me. Mm. You know, when, when your purpose is bigger than you, it's not about you as a person. It's about you being, being able to execute your purpose. So right. if in, in being able to do this, I will need these people to do it, I'm more than happy to do and that. Do your staff understand? Absolutely. I okay. don't go to every meeting. I don't go to everything. I allow them to, mm. to do that as well. It's not a personal... It's it's personal, but it's not it's not about me getting all the the credit for it. I couldn't do it without my team. I mean, I run it as a one man show for a mm. very long time, and now we have a full team with lawyers, with uh, project managers. Mm. We have interns coming in, etc. It's it's bigger than me. It's bigger than me as a person. Mm. Yeah. Oh, okay. So we're talking about the grace of God. Yes. And how important it is mm -hmm. uh, for you mm -hmm. in putting all of this together. Um, some will say it was a calling for you do you feel you received some epiphany absolutely no. I, I i i believe it's absolutely a calling for me okay. when i walk into the prison mm. i have no fears mm. you know when i'm taking people it's okay i'm so scared what if this person i've met everybody i've met people are scared to go there people are scared people Why? are scared i mean it's just to know that somebody's a murderer or somebody's Why? um you know uh, com committed this you know atrocious crime or something but i don't have those fears i deal with them just like i would deal with anybody you know mm -hmm. and stuff so i don't have that and i'm at when i'm in that space You're and i'm peace. speaking to them i'm at peace so okay. i can't explain that than it being my god-given purpose all to right. do that i buy the medications for all the women and i never walk through the prison yard and say no to anybody who gives me a prescription you know and that's just because i always say, tell myself that god will give me a way to mm. be able to provide for them and i've done that for 10 years mm. and i continue to w would you or do you think that the states could do more for the prisons <laughs> i mean re-entry i think i think culturally we're all very you know it's like a when somebody goes to prison mm. that person is ostracized etc I think it's important that we change that mindset, right. you know, and so that way people will see it as I did my crime, I'm doing my time, and now give me a chance, okay. you know, and so all those, you know, reentry programs, all those pr programs in the prisons and stuff will help people to actually reform, mm -hmm. you know, I think right now we're not as congested as we, we used to be, mm -hmm. and they're actually making actual efforts to decongest, to actually give skills training. There's a toilet paper factory in the prison. There's a school in the prison. And I'm, you know, excited to find out yeah, that. Yeah, last time I went there, some of them said they were, they were uh, preparing for exams. Absolutely. Yes. A distance education. Learning at UCC. UCC. Yeah. Yes. And everybody who took the BC exam passed. Oh, so, wow. yeah. There's a lot of hope in yeah. there. Which is so, the your, your challenge is the ch the, the ability to change the mindsets of people outside the prison, how we relate with uh, uh, with prisoners. Yeah. That would be your biggest challenge. I think that's how do you think that should be dealt with? How should we approach it? I mean, it's one thing saying that, oh, they're, they're human beings, uh, they deserve a second chance, so here they are, hug them when they come out, live with them peacefully. It's one thing saying that to people, and people truly believing that, indeed, these people deserve a second chance, so we must live with them peacefully. But I think I, I think should be the approach. In your I think it wouldn't be fair to to approach it like that without actually okay. thinking about the victims of the crimes that these people okay. did. Mm -hmm. You know, it has to be both ways. You know, mm -hmm. because if if you've been attacked by an armed robber before, you are less likely to understandably mm -hmm. have any sympathy towards them. It's the most frightening thing um, that can, and especially if they're children or yeah. you know there was um, um, something or cared whilst it and stuff like that. So I think it's not about just how you receive them okay. it's also about also dealing with the the victims of these crimes mm -hmm. as well and making sure that they also get the necessary help you mm -hmm. know and then also these people who actually do the time don't come out worse than they went in mm -hmm. you know because mm -hmm. sometimes people circumstances lead people to do certain things even though everybody has a choice mm -hmm. but somebody's power to uh, make th hold their willpower to make the right decision may not be as high as somebody mm -hmm. else's you mm -hmm. know mm -hmm. so it's it's a double sided thing yeah. conversation that i think that needs to be addressed together and not mm. just on one side you're a very soft-spoken person am i have you uh, yeah <laughs> you, are. you i'm sure you know that 
Well, so they say. But I, I, if you called somebody, I'm not that. I, I know anyway. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> Do you get tougher than this? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Well, it's not easy being a, a female mm. CEO. You mm. know, sometimes people don't ex- take your before. Well, now is much better, but people yeah. don't take your instructions seriously or they feel like you're a woman so you can't so yeah yeah you have to be yeah stick by your decisions and make the right yeah. decisions so do you agree that usually female bosses have tougher than their their male counterparts it's because absolutely. the women have to do more absolutely yeah i agree how have you dealt with it i mean i'm, you, I'm sure you employ a lot of men and then they're answering to you mm-hmm. you're not just a woman but you're young as well yeah. So <laughs> how have they how how have you dealt with it? How do you deal with it? So I think with me, you know, I was asked this question once that how do you how are you a boss and still feminine, mm-hmm. right? And I and I I don't know what being feminine quote unquote is. Right. You know. If I have to make a decision, I have to make a decision. Mm-hmm. The the considerations with which I, I have to consider to make the decision. It has nothing to do with whether I'm a woman or not. Okay. Is it costing me money? What's more efficient? Um, what makes more sense? How does this fit into my mm. long-term strategic goal? How does this work for the... That's the kind of consideration. I mean, so it has nothing to do with mm. um, whether I'm a man or a woman. It's just that people don't expect women to make those tough decisions because they expect you to be, quote-unquote, very motherly, very, Absolutely. you know, yeah. empathetic and mm-hmm. etc. But... For me, I have to make the decision based on more tangible facts than just emotions. Is that what has led to your success? I would think so. I would believe it's it's a significant right. Um, yeah, and in this in this month that we are celebrating women, and the theme is break the bias. What does the theme mean to you, as someone running successful businesses? For me, I think breaking the bias in different ways. For example, for prison reform. Mm. I think we need to move away from calling inmates inmates and call them detainees, for example, because Why? because I think the the word inmate has so much negative connotation mm-hmm. over the years that been built over the years mm-hmm. that if you call somebody a detainee, it's more humane for me mm-hmm. than calling them inmates. But sometimes I myself have to remember and like you know yeah. and switch mm-hmm. and stuff. And also um, for work wise, I think it's encouraging more women to actually sit at the table you know but one thing i also don't believe in you know as much as i'm really pro um women getting a a seat at the table is that i want women to get a seat at the table on merit right you know this idea of just because i'm a woman and so we need to fill a quota so you don't believe in the quota system I don't necessarily ascribe to it i think that yes they should the quota system as in if you have 10 you might Mm. say that you're going to fill it four or five with women Mm. but those women should be competent to be able to do that otherwise we'll argue for a seat at the table (laughs) and then if you don't have the competency or the the drive to be able to execute the role that they're giving you we're back at square one Mm. so Mm. i feel like you know as much as they should you know they think you you can put a quota to Mm. fill up with women I want to seat at the table based on merit. Right. And, I mean, again, I have to go back to the fact that you have successful businesses. You are experienced. You've been at the bar for 10 years. And so you've seen quite a lot. Do you feel that we are making inroads in this country for the development of women, for instance, empowerment of women, giving more women the opportunities? Are you seeing more women in boardrooms, more women CEOs, more women taking decisions. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you see an improvement? Absolutely. We've come a very long way mm-hmm. than when I started 14 years ago. Mm-hmm. You know, you're finding a lot of women holding key positions. I mean, the Vice Chancellor of um, Legon is a yeah. female. Yeah. Um, you have female ministers holding mm-hmm. um, key portfolios. And um, you have women-owned um, businesses that are doing well and that are being recognized and um, doing more than even other men-owned mm. uh, male-owned businesses mm. so yes i think we've come a long way okay and if you look at parliament and you can decide not to answer this question you look at parliament and the numbers keep dwindling for the women would you hazard a guess can you hazard a guess why that is so do you feel women are i mean i've spoken to some female politicians and those aspiring who at some point just say I think this is where I want to end it because of the name calling. I'm sure you've been called names too because of the position you occupy. But 
as a woman, what would you say to a fellow woman who believes that she's competent to run for political office, but is so scared to take that step because of the name calling, the smear campaign, etc.? I honestly wish I could tell them to ignore it. Is it easy? Is it easy? To but I don't to think do? it's that easy mm. to ignore it. So I think that I'd rather tell the rest of the people to <laughs> make to we need to set a stand on how we treat female you know politicians would you, would, would or you rather we had more women in parliament well that would be good mm. but i don't i think that we need to create an environment where people who actually are you know competent are mm. willing mm. to actually do more will be comfortable to take up this challenge is it something you'll be interested in one day absolutely not <laughs> why not? <laughs> <laughs> I, why I not? think I think I killed that idea of doing politics very early on. I you think know, what that killed it? Well, just what you complain about. Oh, I think right. that it's. Um, I think it takes a toll. I mean, kudos to the female politicians. That's why I have a lot of respect for them. But it's a lot. Mm. Don't think it's my calling. <laughs> You'd rather just do the prisons. Absolutely. <laughs> Focus on that. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, I can I can really understand that. And so, um, what did you do on International Women's Day? Were you busy? I was. International mm -hmm. Women's Day, we celebrated it across board at our restaurants. Mm -hmm. um, and then I attended um, a launch of... Um, but one of my dear friends who just um, who's also a female CEO okay. and she had um, just started a project um, with some women as well and then we hosted a, a dinner at Sandbox for female um, rising stars okay. and some um, female CEOs so it was a nice table we wanted to get the ones up and coming and mm. um, just to be able to oh, that, that's that's really nice yeah. let's talk about food okay yeah I mean you, you you're a fantastic lawyer. You're doing so well with the prisons. How did you get into food too? <laughs> do, but first of all, yeah. do you cook? I do. I cook. I cook. Contrary to popular belief, I cook. <laughs> yes, I cook. I was What's actually the first cook? cook. I was. I, I cook different things. Jollof, everything. I cook. I cook very well. Mm. You know, if I may say so. But I. I. Um, how I got into food, mm. and I hope my mother's listening. But. Um, I was growing up, mm. my mother used to make me go to the market every Saturday mm. at Abu Blushi Market. And I hated oh, it. Tough. I absolutely hated it. But she, she was insistent that I'd go with her. Why? I don't know. I think she just, you know, my mother was, uh, was working. My mother's mm. wor working. She's a biochemist. Mm. You know, she should cook for the weekend, for the week mm. at home. But she would insist that we go to the market with her. And I, it was so not cool at the time because <laughs> I felt like I was one of the cool kids at school. <laughs> and I uh, would go to the market early in the morning and have to wait for them to offload the to plantain and everything. Yum. So, like, I know how to, to shop in the markets. Mm. Like, you know... Mm -hmm. like, you <laughs> so I did it for so long, you know, and then I'd have to come and help her to cook mm -hmm. and I hated it. Mm -hmm. But then I went to college and then I didn't like cafeteria food. And then I started cooking for myself and the few African um, mm -hmm. um, students in my college. Mm -hmm. And then I decided that I wanted to actually own a restaurant. Mm -hmm. And then when I moved back, um, I started Red Chili, mm. which was my first restaurant 14 years ago, in my grandmother's kitchen with all my savings of $600, which was $600, CDs, $600 at the time. Yeah. yeah. And that's how you started that's Red how Chili? I, that's how I started Where, Red Chili. In, Osu? in, Osu, in my yeah, grandmother's house. Oh, that's your grandmother's house. No, in my I grandmother's house. No, we're not where I was now. But before okay. I started my grandmother's, I was the first cook at Red Chili. Mm -hmm. I was the only person who was taking orders. I was the one who was delivering. So I'd take the orders in the morning from 8 till 12 i'd have prepped early from like yeah i know five. because when you call at a certain time you won't, you won't get absolutely yeah. because it, I it used to piss me off i can imagine <laughs> it used to piss I can me imagine, off like, so how? how who is this woman how dare she I it's mean, close because i'm the only person <laughs> cooking and then would okay, eventually nobody knew, this. Nobody knew now that it makes sense yeah and i would oh, literally pick me, up the me. calls i have cursed you in the past <laughs> I'd pick up the yeah. calls, take the orders and deliver and stuff. And then eventually we grew and then, mm. you know, um, hired workers. And then I moved um, 
um, into my um, where I was and yeah, then Inusu, rented in yeah, Usu and I know, then I know that one very yes, well. yes, yeah. yes. That's how I started Red Chili. Right, and it's been fourteen years. Fourteen years this and year. And what would you attribute to the consistency? Because your meals haven't changed. In fact, they become better. And by the way, if you've never bought from Red Chili, you should. And now that you say that proceeds, some proceeds go to the press. Every more right. reason we should be buying from them. But if you're buying, I can recommend three meals: <laughs> the makola uh, basket, basket <laughs> with the, the kenke, uh, the fish. Uh, there is pork. I don't like pork, so I just tell them to take, that take out. the pork out. But, the, but there's everything. The chicken wing. Oh, and the pepper is so good. I, I don't miss the makola baskets on Saturdays. <laughs> and then the apple prensa. That's a special. Yeah, the apple mm -hmm. is so good. I had it on a Thursday, last week Thursday. It was so good. And then today we had the rice and fish stew. Okay. Yeah, today I just felt like, oh, I want to be a semi vegetarian <laughs> so i went for fish but yeah it was that good it was thank that good. you what would you attribute to is it your staff is it your eye for so it's 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 a process from procurement okay right so we're very strict about the type of produce that we use you know so we have mm. a standard and then and you get everything from the markets here everything okay. everything i've i've grown with my bubble sheet ah. but um we've this also is why your mother should listen <laughs> So um, the thing is the recipes. So mm. actually is really, the concept was built on soul food at your grandmother's house. Because mm -hmm. growing up, when I finished school, we'd have to go to my grandma's house and stuff. So my grandmother and my mother cooking and stuff. Mm. So it's authentic recipes. Mm -hmm. So th that's why we don't change. So we don't do, right. we don't add anything else to their boom. It's just, you know, right. contumery and, you know, yeah. and stuff. So that's, I think that's what helped with the consistency. Mm. And uh, even if your chefs leave, it mm. still doesn't change. Yeah, because we have the recipes, ironclad recipes. Right. Is it like the Coca-Cola recipe? Yeah, because I don't think anybody's been able to duplicate <laughs> our taste. <laughs> and why red chili? Why that name? Why red chili? Because personally, I, I don't cook with spices. So I No, I don't. Okay. So it's a lot of green pepper, red pepper, that kind of ginger garlic and stuff. So I think that's where I came up with the name in college, actually. Okay. And then... What inspired it? I mean, it could have been anything. Because I, I used to get extra chilies so that I could put on cafeteria food. Ah, because it wasn't spicy. Because it wasn't spicy, yeah. Oh, and an African girl loves uh, my pepper. pepper. <laughs> no, okay. So that makes a lot of sense. So you did that for a while, mm -hmm. and then you... you branched into something else i still a restaurant yeah so um when i started red chili then i became a mother okay. and then my son had a lot of allergies so uh, he couldn't eat bottled food etc so i started yummy meals which is my kids catering line oh. so we do school lunches for children okay. and so um um that's how yummy meal started and then i've always wanted to be a restaurateur with different concept re um, restaurants and then did yummy meal um madam butterfly which is our asian fusion mm -hmm. restaurant mm -hmm. and then i noticed that a lot of the type of service and the type of expertise that uh, we were looking for people we weren't finding and people just assumed that mm -hmm. everybody who went into catering was either um they didn't really do well in school or etc but i wanted to actually change how people viewed mm -hmm. um chefs cooking and that's how we started the school of culinary arts right and how's that going it's going well we have yeah. I'm, I'm can actually, anybody pass through i mean for bad cooks like me <laughs> <laughs> we have ma we have master classes we have like okay. chef programs etc we actually teach business of the kitchen we have an i'm we're currently about to start a course restaurant 101 on how to start a restaurant okay. and and i'll be teaching that as well right. with my team right. on just to help people who want to actually venture into this space okay so. do you have a lot of people approaching you you know to start a restaurant i do i do yeah. i do i do yeah. i get a lot yeah and do they have to pay for it well um no because sometimes they'll come in my dm or they'll run into <laughs> me and they'll tell me about mm -hmm. it but it, i always tell them that what i would do different is spend a lot more time researching okay. than starting okay. you know how important is that it's absolutely researching before starting you know i started virtually out as a hobby it was mm -hmm. something that i like to do you know mm -hmm. and even though i'm a lawyer like 
compliance, statutory obligations, etc. It's important to research this and to know what your bigger plan is mm -hmm. so that you can work towards that, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so it's very important to do research, you know, and being intentional about everything at okay. your restaurant, you right. know, and that's why you can see the growth pattern yeah. with all my restaurants it, as we've grown. In an era where a lot of young people are branching into starting their own businesses and sometimes they have no clue you're out of school there are no jobs so you need to start something like in your case you 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 of course you're a lawyer but you still felt that you want to start a restaurant but for a lot of a few of these young people there are no options at all so they want to start something what would be your advice for a, a young lady who graduated five years ago and still hasn't found a white collar job and wants to start something small from the from the comfort of their home so i started richly before i went to law school okay okay now were your mates eating from red chili at law school yeah well you know law school is like <laughs> well some of them used to order okay and some of them used to order like i'll take the orders before i finish class right. and then deliver it the next day yeah so you were busy then very busy. how did you combine how did you make it out I think for me personally, when I set my mind to something, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll just go for it. I okay. don't allow excuses to mm -hmm. be the reason why I can't achieve a right. goal. You know? right. But what I would tell them is that, you know, this idea of everybody getting a white collar job mm. needs to stop. Okay. You know, sometimes we're so fixated on being, even just being a corporate lawyer or being a banker mm -hmm. or being the conventional. There's so much. We want to wear suits. I don't know why. <laughs> so I, I feel like I feel like if people, you know, if 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 they stop to just look at what are what are your interests, what are your passions, what okay. are the problems that you can actually provide a solution for, okay. you'll be able to be creative enough to find something okay. to um, um, to develop and start. Mm. Right. So that that will be your advice for them. And these restaurants are doing very well. Yeah, your your client, you get positive feedback from from people. How did you add on with Sandbox? So, so that is that part of the group Sebastian. Yeah, it is. It's Wh managed. Why that name? Group Sebastian is yeah. named after my son. Ah, oh, that's so cute. Yeah. yeah, you should see the light in your eye. <laughs> <laughs> you should he's see. Mini, he just switched. He's a mini lawyer, but yeah. He, oh, is he? Did he take after you? Well, both his parents are lawyers, so I guess. Ah, right. I then um, you have we a have lot a mini going courtroom, in the yeah, but you know, his name <laughs> after my last. How old is he? He'll be ten in October. Oh, yeah. And I have older children as well. Does he judge your your food? Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely, <laughs> yeah. absolutely. He doesn't yeah. like his watchy, sticky. Oh. But he'll be clear to tell At you. Ten. In fact, nine. Yes, he's very vocal. But my other, my one of my older daughter too is very vocal. Yeah, we have like too many lawyers in the house. <laughs> How do you deal with that? Sometimes I just tune out because <laughs> they're all like, but they're very analytical and stuff. And then my other daughter too also works and stuff. We, we have a nice blended you yeah. Know, family. Yeah, yeah. Good family. yeah. So we're talking about group Sebastian. Yes. Yeah. And are you going to add on? Will you add. I'm sure never you say will. never. Yeah, I'm sh Femi, I'm sure you will. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you will. You appear to be very ambitious. I am. You are ambitious. I am. Yeah. I am. Yeah. And I just don't believe that. I feel like if God puts it in my mind, he'll see me through it. And he didn't put it in my mind for no reason. Yeah, so once it's in your mind, you once, once he it. dropped it in my mind, I have to <laughs> do it. He didn't yeah. put it in my mind for no reason. That's how. Despite the obstacles. That Absolutely. You, you, just don't, you just don't mind. You, yeah. So you, you got sandbox as well. Mm -hmm. And by the way, it's such a beautiful place. I love Thank the way you, you rebranded it. It's it's, it's beautiful. Yeah, it's beautiful. Your manager, um, what's his name? Anthony. And oh, he's he's such. A, I don't know where you got him from and the kind of training you gave him, but he Excellent. will make you come back. <laughs> yeah, he will. He's so. Pleasant. I'm so happy to hear that. Oh, he's, he's so such a great oh, member yeah, of our is. team. Yeah, yeah. and it, it it's not just because you are who you are, but it's across the board. Absolutely, you know, he treats everyone with such a special attention yeah i think it's a it's a he's a great asset for you yeah. absolutely yeah so you added on sandbox mm -hmm. yeah and you're growing is that difficult it is mm -hmm. it is because now we in total in the group we have staff of up to about 200 mm -hmm. 
um, and um, managing it because for me all the all the, the 200 stuff yeah that is that is huge you employ 200 people yes we want to be able to create memorable experiences in each and every one of our restaurants right. so it requires a lot of intentionality from the menus how you walk mm -hmm. in how you're greeted the cocktails and stuff so we spend a lot of time doing the behind the scenes and that's a lot of work okay yeah. and so you have all of these restaurants and across the world the pandemic had a toll especially in the hospitality industry how did you deal with how did you survive because a lot of restaurants couldn't come back they couldn't recover how did you deal with it I, first I, of all what was your reaction when we went into a lockdown i thought what am i going to do right. because some of my restaurants are not geared for takeout and delivery madam butterfly for example mm -hmm. is dine-in sandbox is not actually geared for takeout and delivery mm -hmm. retchily is take out and delivery yeah. so that's fine but we had to go back to the table and relook at it. and this is me coming out of a strategy session where we've had quarterly strategies what we're going to do increase sales everything and everything just was not valid because of covid so i go into Did a you go blank at some point you know i didn't go blank immediately i just kept you know i was just like no god will see me through you know i just <laughs> kept saying yeah. we'll figure this out we'll figure this out there but i know the day that you know we had we uh, were coming out of lockdown they had asked for takeout and so now how do you position a restaurant that's not a takeout and delivery as a takeout and delivery right, right? so you're having to create new products so we create the sandflix box mm -hmm. you know where we had food um in a box and encouraging people because people were staying home had to watch mm -hmm. netflix it yes. was a play on netflix oh, so sand so sandflix oh, that's so, so we uh, did the smart. boxes it went out but mm -hmm. It's definitely not generating as if people were coming into the space. Now you have... They're, they're, not, they're not buying drinks. They're not buying champagne. They're not buying... Yeah. So we have staff. So I walk into a meeting with my staff when we they reopened and said we had to social distance. So now we've cut um, the number of people who can come into the space automatically by half. Because you can't have all those people in the space because of COVID. That's your revenue uh, reduced. Revenue automatically reduced, but mm -hmm. you've got staff. So I tell you a story. I walk into a meeting with my staff. First of all, most importantly, to reinforce the COVID rules, mm -hmm. like wash your hands. This is mm -hmm. how we're going to be doing it. The gloves, this right. and etc. And I say, okay, does everybody understand the rules? My second point was going to be, we're going to have to let some people go. Mm -hmm. But before I said that, one staff member of mine put his hand up and he had tears in his eyes and he mm -hmm. said, um, Madam, I just wanted to say thank you for not firing anybody because oh, no, I, when I was coming to sense. work, I was afraid that I was going to lose my job. Ah, oh, he got a vision on the way. And I didn't say a word, a word after that. You'd have broken I went hearts. back to the office, met with my team and I said, we're going to have to figure this out. We're not firing anybody. So you didn't fire anybody? We didn't fire anybody. We did, um, we run shifts so that everybody could at least get a week's worth mm -hmm. worth of salary so that we could manage it for a while. Wow. Yeah. But he, in that moment, I was just about to say it and he said, and I felt it was, it was God speaking to me. So I didn't do it. Yeah. And what was going through your head? I just what? thought, oh God. <laughs> <laughs> but I came back and I thought yeah. I was more, um, I was more committed to finding a solution to but keep all my workers at, at that job. point at that point you made the decision based on based on emotions for me mm -hmm. it wasn't emotions because i when okay. i came in i knew how i was going to do the right. um had to let people go i had a strategy mm -hmm. on how we were going to pay off some people to okay. leave how we're going to redo the schedules etc but when he spoke it was pure empathy no okay i thought it was my sign from god okay that i would figure this out and okay. that's how i i, and, I did. and i did yeah and now business is bouncing back yeah yeah and i think it also created for them a sense of family you know yeah. that we're in this together that when it's good it's good for all of us and stuff so i think it, so I they think, understood yeah absolutely that, so people nice. were coming to work for a week so everybody could actually get a week's worth of salary so we could manage um, the pandemic okay. you know the effects of the pandemic yeah and this was across all your restaurants absolutely we didn't fire anybody we managed to just keep everybody to at least have something 
Wow. Yeah. yeah and I appreciate my staff entirely yeah. for yeah. sticking Be with us. Yeah, because even the big brands, the big hotels and big, re they laid people off. Mm. You know, they, they had to lay a lot of, I'm just talking about right even in the media, some media houses had to let people go in the hundreds. But the truth is, if you know. it had lasted longer, I'd have probably had to make that decision. Right. But at that time, I could afford to try mm -hmm. it out this way. Right. But I'm sure if it had lasted longer than it, uh, it did, it would have been very difficult for us. Right. But, but, but now you're happy. Well, now we're getting back. It's yeah. not. It's not we're as. Not it's not as. It's, we're not at pre-COVID levels, right. but you know we're getting back. You know, okay. but we've had to change one or two things yeah. and and stuff. And yeah, there was such a storm around your purchase of Sandbox, <laughs> <laughs> a media storm that you bought Sandbox for three million dollars. I wish I had that money, but no, <laughs> I didn't. It's um, we have investors and mm. and stuff. It was uh, I think it was. It, it's a. Uh, it, it, we had. To, I had to look. For, I had to look for money. Yeah. To be able to do it, but it definitely was not. Three it's million. an absolute lie. Yeah, but, but when you had this, what what were you thinking? I just thought, can people just try and verify information before they put <laughs> it out? <laughs> but it's not the first time you're dealing with rumors, is it? It comes with unfortunately the terrain. not. You're, you're married to a prominent politician, so it comes with the terrain, doesn't it? I like to believe my husband's a lawyer. <laughs> oh, not a politician. Well, I, I think, think he's a lawyer. He's a lawyer. You prefer that? Does that make you more comfortable? Yes, Absolutely. he's a lawyer. Yeah, we all know he's a lawyer, but yeah, but he's a, he's a politician. He's a lawyer. He's a lawyer. You prefer that. Yes. But how do you deal with it? I think um, one of the key things is not to lend your voice to things that are not productive. Yeah. Can't control everything. Mm. But um, I. I just choose to focus on, I just choose to focus on, um, one minute. I have a surprise on the line for you. Um, hello. Hello. Hi Aisha, how are you? Very well, thanks. Hi Nanava. Radio. Um, your best friend is here. Femi is here. Yes. Aww. Your sister rather. <laughs> Okay, so Femi is on the show. We've been talking about her journey so far. The first question, right. what is Femi's nickname? What? <laughs> Am I allowed to say it, Femi? Y yes, you're allowed to say <laughs> Okay, true nickname is Femo Dollar. <laughs> because Femo from Dollar. a very young age, this girl has always do business. Been so <laughs> oh, so you always love money. I was no, I just like to do business. I used to always yeah. like be selling. I started. I used oh, to sell, sell them like about hair, fabric. I used to do all sorts of little little gigs and stuff. Yeah. So that's what they used to call me. All right, um, Aisha. If there is one thing you haven't said to Femi in your years of friendship and sisterhood, what would it oh. be? Well, the kind of relationship we have we tell each other all the time how much we love each other. And sometimes you know you're not my friend, you're my sister. We have so many memories. Um, every single milestone in my life, I you've always been a part of. And I just want you to know that we love you, we all love you and appreciate you. And I don't know anyone with a bigger heart than me. And everything that you 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 know you have or you have accomplished you deserve and i pray that the world gets to see just even a glimpse of the sense that we know because you're truly special i love you so much my sister oh and by the way if you're listening to star fm aisha on the line is actually the woman behind christy brown aisha you owe oh, me a dress listen another i'm waiting for you to come home <laughs> <laughs> I oh, love you so much, down. Aisha. I oh, didn't I expect you on this. I literally, I, I'm always in tears. Literally, I, I love you like, so of much. Of course, I would. Of course, I'll surprise you. I love you. <laughs> Thank you so much, Aisha. Thank you for joining us on the show. My and pleasure. I hope I can have you next week on the show as a guest I'm if you're in next town. Week today, next week today, probably not, but, but let's so we can find a good day. I'd love to, to come on the show. Okay, fantastic. Thank you so much yeah. for joining us. Thanks. Okay, so you were not expecting that. I know. What a pleasant <laughs> surprise. Yeah. That's my, my sister, my yeah. closest, closest. How long have you been friends? We're, we're 
technically family. Our fathers oh. went to school together oh. in Achimota and Legon. And um, we literally live, our grandmothers live on the same street. So right. we grew up together. together and oh. um, So you know, your, you know your secrets then? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> and um, she's probably the one who knows me the best. Yeah? Uh, yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Anyway, we were talking about uh, being married to the lawyer uh, politician. <laughs> and how you deal with all the the rumors that, that come with it. Because every time he signs a letter, a release, he's in the news. And I'm sure at some point you get dragged in. You know, through no fault. You receive stray bullets. How do you deal with that? I ignore it. You just ignore it. It doesn't affect it. Did it ever bother you at some point? And when did you decide that I'm not going to pay attention? I think generally I have a tough skin. Okay. And so what's not important, I'll just block out. Yeah. It's part of his, once he's doing his work mm. and stuff, it comes with um, yeah. the How work. did you meet him? <laughs> <laughs> Memory lane. I don't know. I met him. <laughs> I met him. <laughs> I met him. You just met him. <laughs> I just met him. <laughs> you weren't a lawyer then, were, were you? The first time I met him? Mm. No. I you wasn't a lawyer. Yeah, no. but did you did you know immediately that this is the man you were going to settle? No, no, no you no. didn't. Yeah. We're friends, my husband. You were, and I friends, were friends for a long time, yeah. And when did you notice that spark? I don't know. I mean, I like the way you you refer to my forever boyfriend. <laughs> 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 my forever he is, boyfriend. He is. Because yeah. we're friends, you yeah. know. I think we have. Um, we we really. I, I really Penny, appreciate him. Am I? Yes, you are. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to try not to. But um, we're friends, and I think that uh, more than anything, we understand each other. Mm -hmm. And um, we're, like, um, he, he's my biggest cheerleader. You okay. know, I always, I always say I don't take it for granted that he lets me be, you know. How important is that? It's very important mm -hmm. because I, I think that as much as, you know, I do what I do, mm -hmm. Knowing that you have somebody in your corner who's like cheering for you, who's right. proud of you, etc., also mm -hmm. encourages you to actually be able to do what you s you s set out mm -hmm. to do and do more. So I don't take his um, um, support and encouragement for granted. But we're friends; mm -hmm. like we're literally friends. Yeah. I I don't have any. He's a he's a fashionista. He is, and yeah. he appears to be a romantic. I mean, he plays the trumpet. No, he plays the piano. He, play, he plays the piano, rather. And he sings. And he yeah. sings. Yeah. Very well. Yeah? Oh, I like that. Very well. He does. <laughs> does he sing for you? He does. He now he writes a lot of gospel songs now, and he sings gospel. I should share it with you. Yeah. Oh, yeah? yeah. Do, wait, are you responsible for that? Well. Did you play a role? So he says, but um, we're, we, we both believe in God. And, yeah. uh, I mean, for somebody who plays the piano and sings as well, I've seen him perform. Uh, the last time, I think, was at Villa Monticello. Oh, that's a long time. That was a long time ago. Yeah. And I was sitting in a crowd. It was a very small crowd. And the ladies, oh my God, they won't stop. Oh my God! Oh. How do you deal with all of that? I mean, now he doesn't do it, <laughs> but I'm sure with his great sense of fashion, and he's an intelligent man, well-spoken as Very. well. I mean, you must feel some competition from someone, no? Absolutely not. Hey. At all. I say he's my friend. Yeah. So I don't, like, of course, he's a nice-looking man. I mean, yeah, they sh I like the fact that they think he's hot. <laughs> It makes you happy that yeah, yeah that you I, I, like, I like it when he's you know he's out he's looking good and I see the comments and stuff we laugh about it we yeah, talk do you, about do it. Do you play a role in what he wears? No, 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 no. He he's literally he's very good at picking yeah. his style. He's done it for years and it's yeah. just it's just who he is. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, let me move away from your husband now. It's a bit uncomfortable for you. <laughs> no, it's not. I'm just sure? looking like what, what is Nanaba going to ask next? Oh, no, but no, no, no. But no, no. he's he's good. He's a good. He he's a good that. person. Very yeah. good person. What, what makes him a good person? Apart from supporting you, he's he's a very thoughtful person. Okay. He's a very um um, he's a very kind person. And um, I have this thing where I tell people that he's the worst gossip. <laughs> you can never. Tell <laughs> he will go and ask. No, he's not asking. You can't. He doesn't even encourage such conversations. Right. You you can't even tell him I heard this. No, no, no. Right. No, no, no. He does not interested at all. Yeah. Yeah. 
He's okay. not a... So what is it that Ghanaians don't know about him? I mean, I'm sure you read sometimes the, the, the kind of things that are written about him, mm -hmm. especially on social media, and you probably sometimes get shocked. Uh, is this the same man I'm married to? What is that one thing about him that Ghanaians have failed to notice? If we have failed, yeah. That he's, he's a very kind and very approachable person sometimes people just see him and just assume things about him just because of the way he dresses or the way he speaks and thinks that you think he's arrogant yeah but he's so far from that yeah. you know um um and i think that's what i wish they knew how much of a good person he is okay let's move away from him now and go to other matters mm -hmm. I, I know we've talked about your businesses but there's one question that i i forgot to ask is it difficult mm -hmm. running a business in ghana I mean, people have talked about the difficulty, access to capital, um, access to a few other things. Uh, there have been several reports about uh, doing business in Ghana. I mean, the ratings have been very good for Ghana in the last uh, few years. But for you, hands-on, running a business, what would you say? I think it's, um, for me, the difficulty stems from the fact that you're trying to create something that I don't have a prototype of. Okay. So I, I can't reference that, oh, it's been done like this, so do it like this. So right. I'm trying to create world-class excellence by Ghanaians mm. for the world. Mm. That's kind of difficult, yeah. you know. And so it requires a lot more training, um, a lot more, um, um, you know, strategy, right. etc. And being intentional with stuff. And that mm. takes time mm. because maybe you don't have... Um, the ex full expertise complement right. of the of a team to yeah. be able to do that but I absolutely believe in um, in, in my team does it bother you that we we have a lot of foreigners in that sector well for me I'm trying to create something at the most by Africans for the world okay so it governs how I hire okay all right let's move to other issues <laughs> um, first is polygamy what are your thoughts on polygamy? I think it happens in um, it happens in Africa. I think it happens elsewhere. Mm. But I think that um, if it works for you, mm. go for it. Yeah. If it doesn't, don't. Would do it work it. for you? Me? Mm -hmm. No. <laughs> mm. I like that. It's so emphatic. <laughs> no, no. no. I, I think if, if it works for you. Yeah. 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 I mean, people do it and they're happy. So I think ha happiness is like. Um, Are you a jealous person no, in no. a relationship? No. You're not? No. So I've heard people say that if you don't get jealous in your relationship, then you don't love enough. I disagree. True? I just mm. feel like. Um, People are grown adults, you mm. know, and, and they'll do what they want mm -hmm. to do. And of course, I mean, every woman has these little things where it irritates yourself, but I wouldn't call myself um, a jealous person. I feel like everybody, I believe in individuality. Mm. Like you're a person before you're with somebody. Right. So, yeah. I don't overthink. You're, you appear to be non judgmental. Yeah. Is that a deliberate? I don't think it's very comfortable. Mm -hmm. I, I, I think um, I know what it feels like to be judged. So mm -hmm. I'm very intentional about it. I'm, I, I, I don't think it's a comfortable feeling. And I don't think people should do that. Because sometimes people judge without knowing the person. I've seen people who've walked up to me and said, Oh, I can't believe that you're nice. And I'm, but the, you don't. <laughs> I can't believe you're yeah, nice. Yeah, they say, I can't believe you're nice. Or, I can't believe you spoke to me and stuff like that. And that's, that's troubling that people create um, a persona around you yeah. based on either social media or what they've heard and stuff. So it's very important to me that I don't judge. Right. And uh, what are some of the wildest things you've heard about yourself that really shocked you? Just because you asked right now, I can't think, but it'll come yeah, to it me. Yeah, it'll come to you. Yeah. <laughs> there must be quite a few then. I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. What do, you do, what do you do for fun, apart from pray? <laughs> I like that. <laughs> um, I hang out with my, my, my nearest and dearest. I spend time with my children. You know, I have um, older kids and stuff, and we're always catching up. And Are stuff. they your biological kids? No, okay. really, yeah. Okay. But, um, but my you, stepchildren. You have a very good relationship. I do, I do, okay. I do, I do. How, how did you manage that? Um... I guess once again prayer okay. but um i have a good relationship with them i think um when you when you lead with a clean heart a pure spirit god always has a way of working things out for you so okay. so you spend time with your kids you i spend time, time with my kids i like to travel i um 
What are the places you like to travel to? Is there any particular destination? No, not yeah. really. But I like eat, um, eating out and eating uh -huh. at restaurants I was going and to stuff. Ask you that. Yes. Since you run restaurants, yeah. and you say you're not you're not judgmental. No. Do you walk into a restaurant, eat the meal, and think mm, this could have been way better? Well, I would usually find the owner to tell them because I appreciate constructive feedback. Okay. And I also know what it takes to be able to do okay. run restaurants. So mm -hmm. I could be sitting at a table and people so be you complaining. Visit other restaurants? I do. I go to other restaurants. I, I dine why, at other why, restaurants. Why don't you dine at yours? I do. But I, I mean, sometimes, you know, you, you just variety. You want variety and see yeah. what's out there. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. And do you pick up ideas from other restaurants? I tell people I'm my own competition because I know exactly what I'm trying to create in the space. Yeah. But, you know, there, there's industry practice mm -hmm. and there are things that will be peculiar to you, right. you know. So if industry practice is a welcome drink. What's peculiar to me is what type of welcome drink that mm -hmm. um, will serve at okay. Sandbox or anything like that. So um, I, I, I'll go into the space. If I'm sitting at a table, people are complaining about timing. I understand what it takes for it. Maybe there's a delay or something. So I always make... Not excuses, but I always just tell them that, look, it's, it's really not easy to do this. You yeah. Know, and stuff, so it should be more patient. Okay. So that's what you do for fun. That's it? And um, what else do I do? Yeah, I, that's, that's what I do. I like to read. Okay. I like to read. I, I read quite a bit. And do you I dance? I mean, I've seen you at Sunbox a couple of times. The music is playing. You're not even dancing. You're so serious. <laughs> <laughs> You're so it's serious. Work, it's work for me. <laughs> it's work for me. But um, at what point does it stop to be work for you? Well, now because we've got a lot of the structures, you know, taking up, mm. so I don't have to be as prancing and up and down. And how do you plan all of these theme parties? At Sandbox. How how do you do it? Yeah, at Sandbox. So we do strategy every November. And it's always packed. Well, we thank God. <laughs> you know, we it's do. always back. Well, <laughs> I think for me, I just want to create a product that's so good you can't afford to ignore me. Yeah. yeah. So do you have something else coming up? Yes, we do. We do. we do. we do. Yeah. So we do strategy in November for the year. Okay. So that at any point in time at each of the restaurants, we know exactly what we're going to do. Okay. Of course, sometimes it changes mm. and um, we'll have to change. Maybe like COVID came, we have to change something. Right. But we have a fair idea of what we want to do. But our overall vision is to create memorable experiences. Mm -hmm. So the always, um, how do we create that memorable experience? Are we, are we doing well? I mean, we are, we are positioning ourselves as a tourist hub. Um, a tourism hub and I mean um, the year of return taught us a lot mm -hmm. and since then December has become uh, you know Ghana has become the place to be in December and do you feel that the hospitality industry has braced up properly for this challenge I think the hospitality industry has grown yeah yeah there's so many new restaurants so many new experiences mm. that's um, coming up in Accra and uh, even outside Accra, you know, and you're getting a lot of people by virtue of the year of return. Mm -hmm. And I think had it not been for it COVID, helped, right? absolutely. It and it, it had it not been for COVID, mm -hmm. the beyond the return would have even taken off yeah. us to another thing. And people are choosing Ghana as a destination spot for, for Christmas. Christmas. It's shocking. Yes. And I think yeah. because it's of that, thing, yeah. it's had a ripple effect mm -hmm. on the hospitality sector. More hotels coming up, um, um, better experiences, better customer service. And the competition is good. Yeah. Okay, so th that was just by the way. We're talking about what you do for fun. I do. So that. Do you dance? I I do. I when I go out, yeah. You do dance. <laughs> You're an okay dancer or a great dancer. <laughs> <laughs> I think. Just, we're, okay. we're good. We're Intermediary. Good. Mm, we're good since before. We're good. Yeah. <laughs> were you always like this? Like what? Prayerful. Or there was no, a time no, where you no. were wild. No, I don't think I was always this prayerful. No. Yeah, you were no. wild. I was like, as any young girl, <laughs> I used to like going to his majesty's. <laughs> right. I've had my share of like having of fun. fun. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And um, you got married last year, right? Yes. You yes. just celebrated your anniversary. I did. Yeah, I, I did. saw your picture I did. on your page I did. with your forever boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> I like that forever boyfriend. My forever boyfriend. Yes, I saw that. And before you met your husband, I'm sure you had other relationships. Yeah, <laughs> I like Trust the way. <laughs> I like the way you're, you're smiling. Okay. I mean, it's not a tough question. I'm going to ask. Who was your first love? <laughs> like I, I don't even know. Like when I was in. 
primary school or something. Oh, you had first laugh in primary. No, no, I don't. I, I don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> you just put me on the spot. Yeah. I, 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 um, yeah. I can't even. You can't remember. There must have been this guy that you you had a crush on. Did you have any crushes? Of course I did. Yeah. When I was growing up, yeah. when I was in school, but they all didn't matter. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'm grateful i ended up where i did yeah oh dear yeah <laughs> and do you remember who you shared your first kiss with oh my goodness nana but i do i do I oh do. you do you remember that I one do. maybe was it good or bad it was okay <laughs> <laughs> it's good i'm not going to ask for this guy's name because he will be scarred for life <laughs> he'll be scarred for life let's talk about um Musicians in Ghana. Is there any particular musician you listen to? I listen to a lot. Different mm. ones. Yeah. Sarko Right. Uh, King Promise. Okay. Um, Shatawale. Ah. No. Um, Stone, Stone Boy. Boy. Oh. <laughs> okay, so Sorry. Stone Boy, Shatawale. You prefer all Stone Boy. Or you I like all of them. You like all of them. I don't want to. You don't want trouble. tomorrow. I like everybody. <laughs> okay, so disclaimer. She loves both of them. Yes, both both yes. dancehall artists. And um, Kojo Entry? Daddy oh. Lumba? Kojo Entry is... He's your favorite. So between Daddy Lumba and Kojo Entry? Kojo Entry and Daddy Lumba. Oh, you prefer both? Both you of them. You don't like trouble, do you? I don't like... <laughs> you don't like trouble. I like good trouble. <laughs> right. Um, I, the last thing I want to talk to you about Tell is me. body enhancements, cosmetic mm -hmm. surgery. And because you, you talked about not being judgmental. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the time, these women who go for these enhancements and you know, to correct a few things mm -hmm. are judged. Mm -hmm. what, what's your thought on cosmetic surgery? I think people underestimate how, um, especially for women, how their bodies affect their self-esteem. Okay. You know, there are some who are able to overlook it mm -hmm. and are comfortable. Mm -hmm. There are others, too, that... Um, it helps them to build their self-esteem. Right. So for me, I feel like it's on a case-by-case -case basis. If if you're doing it for yourself, if mm -hmm. you're doing it for your own um, happiness or mm -hmm. this thing, that's fine. If you're doing it for a man, absolutely not. Oh, you shouldn't do it for a man? No, no, no. Why not? What if the man, the man is your forever boyfriend and your forever boyfriend wants that? You won't do it? No, I think you should do it for yourself. Okay. You're, you should you should um, love yourself enough mm -hmm. to know that, to make yourself important. Okay. You know, it's not about somebody else because if anything happens, you'll, be very, you'll regret it. Right. So if you make decisions that are based on your value set, your ethics or who you are as a person, then um, it sits better with your okay. conscience. You okay. know, and I believe in individuality before people become a couple. Okay. So for the your advice to women who are doing it because their men are like that. Sometimes the men don't even say it, but these women see their men eyeing women who have a certain kind of body, and they feel to to sustain my marriage, to keep it intact, to make my man happy. I I, I mean I think that's a different debate, but I don't think you can keep a man by how you look only. Yeah. No. What does it take then? I wouldn't know. Every man has different, uh, <laughs> <laughs> different. Uh, the eighty twenty rule. There's yeah. people have different things that um, for them are important. You know, mm -hmm. there are some people that maybe how they look is important. There are people that um, how their support system is important. So people are different. So I don't think that it's um, it should be. I don't think people should make those type of decisions because of somebody else. Right. No. Do you have any talent apart from running businesses? <laughs> Do you think? I can't sing to save my life. Oh. Like my kids so tell me sing not to bathroom. sing. No, I don't even bother. My kids are always laughing at me. My girls are Is always it that laughing bad? at me. Yeah, it's bad. I can't sing. Yeah. I no no, I can't sing. Okay. I just um what about me, my talent? I don't know. I think maybe just I'm like people's hype woman, you know. I'm, <laughs> I I like to see my I like to see my girlfriends win. I like to see people do well and stuff and I I like to encourage people. So maybe When when we say women supporting women, mm -hmm. Do you see it a lot around you? Do you see more women supporting their own? Do you see it at all? I don't you think, think there is a lot of hypocrisy? I don't think we, I see it there. enough. Okay. I don't think I see it enough, and I don't think I see it as genuinely as it should be. 
Okay. You know, I think it's one thing to say you support somebody um, and it's one thing for you to patronize the person because okay. I think that's so how you are supporting somebody. Saying you support somebody is the easiest thing to do. Okay. But actually, you know, patronizing either their business or their service or, um, or recommending them when they're not there and stuff, I think that's what when you say you're supporting women, that's what it actually should be as opposed to, you know. The hashtag. The audio service. Of <laughs> like, I support you, I support you. I like you. the audio. Do you have that song? Audio, some Nigerian guys. Audio that. service. Audio. No, I think. There's a song like that. Yeah. Peace Square. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, audio money. Oh, yeah. that's audio money. Because he said. Yeah. Anyway, so why from the Femi? You're partly Nigerian. <laughs> Are you? <laughs> So, mm -hmm. I think it's a good time to settle this. Yeah. But um, my my mother is half Ashanti, half Fanti. Oh, okay. My father is half Nigerian, half Ewe. Oh, then you are Ghanaian. Thank you. You are so you are more Ghanaian than a lot of Ghanaians. Medase. Yes, so I, I, I am, I am, um, my... Do you speak any of the languages ever, fancy? I speak tree. Mm. I speak tree. I speak fancy. I speak guy a little bit. And I don't speak any ever. Nigerian language or... Right. Uh, no. So I just have... So when you hear people say you're not a Ghanaian... So people do that sometimes, and then I start speaking tree, and then they look very shocked. <laughs> yeah, because... That's and they, yeah, funny. yeah, it's yeah. Femi and stuff, yeah. so... Oh, are your, are your parents still together? Yes. And my father went to Achimota. My mother went to Wesley Girls. Oh. My parents went to uh, University of Ghana, Legon, for their first degrees. So we're Ghanaians. I don't think my father knows anywhere in, in, in Nigeria. In he doesn't Lagos. go to Nigeria? Okay. No, no, no. Because he was born in Takwa and um, he's, he's lived his whole life here. He speaks very good Fanti. So you're so, you're so Ghanaian? Full. Ghanaian. Yeah. It's just my name that seems to be. Yeah, it's the Femi. It's the Femi that's. Yeah. But you don't have a Ghanaian name? No. You don't. <laughs> <laughs> because I've, I've had don't. some politicians say that. I'm, I'm you're, Nigerian. You're a Nigerian. Oh, dear. No, you're, there's a Nigerian. Pacho Mea Santini. Yeah. If you go for it, yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, anyway, yes, yes. I'd have to end it here, but it's been such a wonderful evening. It's been such a you. great interview. Yeah. But Thank congratulations you. for Thank what you, you do, so especially much. for the the detainees. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, to borrow your word for the detainees. Thank I think it's you. it's truly amazing. I d I don't think you should play audio money. What what do you want to listen to? I know what you want. Tell what? me. Could you one, more one more chance. <laughs> DJ is not serious. <laughs> is not bad. <laughs> who, who, who is behind one more chance? Um, is it because you were talking about second chance? That's right, because I said second chance. He wants to play me one, one more, more chance. chance. So which Kojenji song? Is there anyone in particular? Um, Middle for power. Ah, you have that? Isaac, cool. you better have it. But Femi, it's been wonderful talking to you. Uh, Femi is a CEO of Group uh, Sebastian and Executive Director of the Fair Justice Initiative. And she runs Red Chili, Madam Butterfly, Sandbox, Yummy Meals. Meals. And the School and of Culinary Arts. Precisely. And so remember that when you patronize any of these businesses, you are supporting a detainee at, at the, the prison. Uh, just don't forget that. So go on my recommendation try the makola basket on saturday <laughs> on saturday directly yeah, the upper prancer on thursday yeah yeah you love it i'm not Thank a fan of you. you know it was the first time i was trying upper prancer i'm, I'm glad i'm I've glad we converted you i feel i don't it's know heavy. i don't think no it's not heavy i see the meal and i think that ah i feel like a witch <laughs> <laughs> So I've never had the courage to try it. So my friend Amma at House of Makai okay. insisted that, no, you have, you to, have try to try this Apopranza. And it was so good. Oh, it was thank so you good. So I much. loved it. It was spicy. I think that's thank why I loved it the most. Thank you thank so you. much for supporting. Thank you for talking to Thank you to so us. much. Yeah. Is the song ready? Okay. Femi, this is from us to you. <laughs> <laughs>